or Gordon appears weekly on a, a WGN affiliate in Denver, Colorado as a career coach. And um, he has a segment every week, and so he's been doing this for a long time, and I'll let him talk to you a little bit about that. But everybody welcome Gordon Miller. All right. So in all fairness, I've been doing a lot of things for a long time, right? <laughs> Witness my gray hair. So uh, the real profile I want to tell you about me, my bio, is that I'm a very happy husband, and I mean it. I'm a very lucky dad of two great kids, and I have five grandsons that I can't quit talking about. So if I get diverted and start talking about my grandson, just throw something at me, I'll be okay, I'll quit talking about it. And then one other thing you really need to know about me, other than those things that Terry talked about, is I'm an over-the-top Beatles fan. Oh, no. <laughs> right? I'm, I'm really upset that the 60s ended. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and my wife reminds me, okay, she's going, I know the type, right? My wife is like, honey, there's other music now, you know? There's other music you can listen to. But that, those are the important things I really want you to know about. A couple of housekeeping things. I have a question to start. Uh, if you're comfortable with this, how many of you are employed currently? Okay, so roughly half, and I'm assuming the other half are unemployed or something else, right? Uh, what I'm going to talk about tonight really applies to both employed and unemployed. So other than a few cases where I'll point out the difference and how a suggestion or an idea or some research I've done might apply to you specifically if you're employed or unemployed, assume that everything I'm talking about applies to both sides of the table because it really does. And I'll talk about how that works. So thank you for sharing your status, if you will. I also want to ask this question as part of the housekeeping, if you, if you will. And that is, when you saw the title to this presentation this evening, Creative Disruption, what was your first thought? Curiosity. Curiosity. <laughs> what the heck does that mean, right? Did you have any thoughts about what it might mean? Okay. How about somebody else? What was your first thought? Pardon me? Healthcare reform. Healthcare reform. <laughs> yeah. We, we, had a, uh, we had a workshop this morning and we were having a little bit of this conversation and somebody in the audience called it creative destruction. That could be in some cases, right? So that's certainly the case. Anybody else? Uh, late 90s dot com frenzy. Okay. Terminology. Ah, that Those could... Disruptors were supposed to survive. Right. I'm sure they did. And in fact, that's what they call They called it disruptive technology, yeah. right? And that's kind of what I think was the forebearer. People like George uh, probably can say more than I can, but that was kind of the forebearer to Web 2.0, wasn't it? Sort of that disruptive technology. You know, what is some new technology that's going to lead us to the next level? And that's really what this conversation tonight is about. You know, how has the, I don't need to tell you how the economy's changed, but how has that impact your profession, your career, your business? And, and more importantly, how will it impact it going forward? Those of you who are unemployed probably know very well how it's impacted you currently. And maybe even those of you who are employed know how it's impacted you. It's probably changed your workload. It's probably changed your focus at work. It's probably had some sort of an impact. So I don't think I need to talk any more about things are going to continue to change. And the idea behind creative disruption is, to some of you, a new way of looking at your career. It's a new way of looking at your job search. It's a new way of looking at your profession, your company. And not everything I'm going to say tonight you're going to agree with. Typically what happens from my perspective, if the camera was back here looking at you, there's going to be a few eyes that are going to roll with a couple things I'm going to say. There's going to be a few scratches on the head with a couple things I'm going to say. And you're going to think, geez, what's this guy's problem? 
well, I'm from Denver, and it's a mile high there. <laughs> and we don't have as much oxygen as you guys have here. So one of the reasons I love coming to Chicago with all this vegetation, there's lots of oxygen, right? So I come here and get my fix and then head back, which I'll do tomorrow. So next question for either of you, do you see the opportunity to start thinking about creative dis disruption for you? Time to kind of think about more training, more education. How can you kind of jump to that next? Where the puck is going to be? How that you know the golf? So they say like go where the puck is. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, that's a good point. So some of us have uh, extensive education, extensive certification, extensive uh, research. Yet maybe it's not so applicable anymore like it was 10 or 20 years ago. So what do I do going forward? The disruption might be if I decide to go back and get some additional education, or maybe it's a certification or training, what's it going to be on? What education do I get? And part of what I'm saying about creative disruption is that it's probably not what you would have been advised to do even two years ago. It's probably not the same thing. In my opinion, the market has changed that dramatically. And maybe you've experienced, uh, experienced that change to some degree. Maybe you haven't. But if you haven't, I'm going to predict you will. I'm pretty confident of that you're going to experience how the market has changed, and it will impact you in some form or fashion. There was a time not long ago that owners of companies, CEOs, hiring executives had a clear picture of who they wanted to hire. So when they were thinking about hiring an executive, a manager, a professional, a director, they had a pretty good idea. In fact, they had a position description, right? That said, we're looking for this kind of person with this kind of education, with this kind of experience, with these qualifications, and they will fit into this box. Isn't that right? I mean, I'm sure there were always exceptions to that, but for the most part, that was the case. So part of what I do in my current profession as an executive coach and a writer, I get the opportunity to talk with business owners and CEOs under the guise of market research, which is exactly what I'm doing. I do market research every day, but I do it at the street level. I talk to the people who are making decisions and are experiencing the pain and trying to figure out what to do next. That's the market research I do. It'd be best called non-scientific research. It's anecdotal research at the greatest degree. So that's part of what I'm doing here tonight is I'm going to share with you what I'm seeing and hearing in the marketplace today and what the thinking is by company owners, CEOs, and hiring hiring executives for the future. Because I ask them those questions. And I grill them as much as I can to try to really get inside their head. And I'm going to share that with you tonight. All right? <coughs> so let's start with this. Um, what do you think today's hiring executive is thinking about their new hires going forward? And I've obviously given you a clue because I'm talking about creative disruption. What do you think they're thinking right now? New ideas. New ideas. What kind of ideas? Something to lead the company from here forward. Okay. Somebody can think. All right. Somebody who can think about where we are now and where we want to go and how we're going to get there. So why do they want new ideas? They're looking for people who will make the company money. Ah. All right. One of the things you've heard a lot of, and I'll talk about a little bit tonight, it used to be all about experience. In fact, my first book that I wrote about 12 years ago and I interviewed over 300 CEOs and business owners around the country, the two things I heard 12 years ago was education and experience. That's what they were looking for 12 years ago. We want this kind of education, and that varied, of course, from company to company and position to position. One of the things I heard a lot was MBA, right? We want an MBA for this. They assumed that was going to fix their ills and take them to the next 
level, and in some cases it did.